Saturation masks are hugely useful and making them in Photoshop is one of my favorite things to do. Um, they're not something you need every single edit, but you know, sometimes it's a great way to color grade and sometimes it's a great way to just correct color when you have some issues that you need corrected. Sorry, I'm banging things around here. Saturation masks are awesome, but did you know you can put them in Capture One or you can create them in Capture One? So we're going to talk about the two methods that you can use. One is natively in Capture One, which a lot of people weirdly don't realize. Some people are out there doing it and that's great, but there is a way to make a saturation mask um, and use it for any of the tools. You can. <laughs> we'll show you that in a second. But first, we're going to talk about as a reminder, in December 2022, I started figuring out a hack to uh, allow subject selection of different kinds, whether it's subject or specific elements of a subject or really anything um, in Capture One by creating these masks in Photoshop and then bringing them in and utilizing the tools in Capture One to create masks for them. So in this case, what you're looking at, here's my main shot. This is right out of camera. And then this is a saturation mask that I've made in Photoshop. I created the mask using Chroma Data, which is one of my actions. That's a process that I use. So it's a real accurate saturation mask. If you're new to saturation mask, look at it and I'll explain it to you. Look, look at it compared to the other one, to the original. If you look at her white outfit, not a lot of color there, not a lot of saturation. So it's almost nearly black. On this little darker side of the outfit, there's some blue. Okay, a little color cast there from the sun. And you can see their saturation there. Her skin is very saturated as well. The deep parts, dark parts here, don't have a whole lot of color in them. While there is blue in the, um, you know, the hot tub here, the spa, or I think that's the edge of the pool, shallow of a pool actually, um, there's not a lot of color in it. So as you can see, we're at saturation. So that's what we're looking at. The brighter areas, in this case, they're toned with this tan color just for the selection purposes of Capture One, which I find that works well. Um, it, this is essentially a mask, a saturation mask that you could make in Photoshop and utilize. But instead, I've created it with this tan color as white instead of, um, you know, the regular on the regular mask. And of course, everything else is just black. So what I do is, as the hack goes, is I go to my advanced, which apparently I've already done. <laughs> but let's redo it real quick. I'm going to reset this one. Okay. Now, this is not a raw file because, of course, I had to just export it as TIFF or PSD. I've noticed lately PSD seems to be working. Now, here's what I do. I go to the color editor, advanced, choose little eyedropper, pick some range, you know, or the range. There's only really one hue range. Max out the saturation and, and you know, luminosity of it. And then on the top right of the color editor, go to create mask layer from selection. If it works, I say if because every now and then, Capture One has an error on that process. Nothing to do with the hack, nothing to do with anything we've done just the way it is. Now, what you have in front of you is a saturation mask, okay? You can right click the actual mask itself and say refine mask, and you can soften and smooth in a little bit if you feel you need to or want to. I will warn you, it's very useful for getting some of your perimeters in order, but if you really peg it too much, then it starts getting too hazy and blurry in a lot of purposes. And you really want a detailed mask or a selection mask of some kind to be really accurate. So a little bit of refinement sometimes helps and sometimes doesn't make a difference at all. Okay, so this is a sat mask, saturation mask, made from Photoshop with the hack. Okay, now, how do we make one on our own in Capture One natively? Well, it's not hard. Like I said, people have done it. When I first figured out how to do it, I looked up immediately to see if other people had done it, and they had. Now, we start again with, here's the raw file. We start again with Color Editor Advanced. We choose the eyedropper tool. It doesn't entirely matter what you pick, okay? Pick a color. Now, max out the saturation on the ring. I usually take the selection point into the saturated area. Then I pull the ring in, right? Take the smoothness, which is how much, you know, sort of blending into non-saturated areas we get, or excuse me, blended into non-selected areas. We're going to make it all saturated in a second. Max it out. That's usually what I start with. Now I take either side of this pie piece and roll it all the way around. When you go past its original point, it'll reset. So pull it back a little bit right there. Okay. That is now showing is selecting just the saturated areas. And as you can see, because of smoothness, that blurry going into the inside, it's slowly fading away into the non-saturated areas. We can prove this by coming down here to our little check bar, view selected color range, okay? And you can see that only the most saturated areas of our image are involved in this selection, okay? If we turn it off, we can see what we're talking about, this area here, under her neck, all of that. We want that on because this is how we can visualize our, our mask, right? So we can take the center ring and move it in until we get more of the saturated areas. Maybe a little bit more, something like that, okay? From that, to that, that's our selection. Very, very subtle. We're, we're really capturing most of the saturated area, but we can create, we can work with it 
right here and now and do what is available to us under advanced, which is smoothness, which is just a selection range, hue, saturation, and lightness. But what if we want to do more than just hue, saturation, and lightness? Because we can. So if I go to saturation right now, I can boost the saturation of the saturated areas, right? And that's great because we have flexibility to adjust the mask. But if we don't want to just be committed to hue, saturation, and lightness, we can do the same thing that we did for the hack. Top right, little icon, create mask layer from selection. Boom. And now we have a sat mask from C1. Okay. Now, if we compare them, okay, this is one well, it's kind of hard to see because they're both the exact same thing. So we're going to make a new variant of the same image and I'm going to copy over the Photoshop sat mask. Hopefully this will work because sometimes this doesn't too. Yay, hacks. <laughs> Let's see what it did. Photoshop hack. There it is. And there it is. Okay, so here's our two sat masks. The one on the right is our Photoshop hack. The one on the left is from Capture One. They're extremely similar, obviously. Just different range. I could have expanded the range more on this one. Now, obviously, when you create a mask, you're committing to it, right? You know, when you make this kind of mask in Capture One, you can't really adjust it. You have to remake it if you want a broader range or less of a range. But still, now with this mask that I've created, the Capture One mount, if I turn off the mask, let's go to it, okay? But now I can use any tool. I can use curves on the saturated areas if for some reason I wanted to, okay? I can choose the green channel of the levels for my saturated areas if I wanted to, you know? Um, there's anything that we can do. We can color grade into the saturated areas if we wanted to, see? So we have all this flexibility to use any tool available to us in the saturated areas because we created a saturation mask in Capture One. Now the same, like I said, the process also works with the Photoshop hack for any type of selection, skin, sky, manual custom selection, and of course, sat mask as well. And real quick before we go, uh, now that you know how to do it in Capture One, the opposite is also true. So if you were to make a new layer and call it, I don't know, these sat areas, <laughs> you can go to the top right tool um, function, excuse me, menu, <laughs> and say copy mask from sat mask C1. There it is. Right click the name and say invert mask. And now we have a layer that controls uh, just the desaturated areas. So if I wanted to brighten the desaturated areas, I could see that. And on the sat areas, I could, uh, I don't know, darken them for whatever reason, you know? So I went from this to that. I don't know. So saturation mask can be hugely useful. You can make them in Capture One. You can use the Photoshop hack, but just remember that when you start playing with these in and of themselves, they're not a master solution to anything. But once you start playing with, hey, I want to take all my saturated colors and get them under control. Sometimes you look at a situation and go, wait, the area I want to select is all saturated and the areas that I don't want selected are not. I can probably use a sat mask to get my selection, right? You never know. So just consider that and realize again, because a lot of people don't, you can make a saturation mask in Capture One.